There is a proposal to dam the Mediterranean Sea and drain it out, uniting Europe and Africa into a new supercontinent called Atlantropa. The Mediterranean Sea is naturally evaporative, meaning that every year it loses about three times as much water from evaporation than it gains through rivers and rainfall. To cover this gap and maintain the sea level, every year thousands of cubic kilometers of water flow into the sea from the Atlantic through the Strait of Gibraltar. If this strait was blocked, the balance would be thrown off and the Mediterranean Sea would dry up. In fact, around 5.96 million years ago, exactly this happened. Due to shifts in the African and Eurasian tectonic plates, the precursor to the Strait of Gibraltar closed, sealing off the Mediterranean from the Atlantic. Without water flowing in, the Mediterranean began drying up, and for about 360,000 years, the strait repeatedly opened and closed, drying up and refilling the Mediterranean. Then, around 5.6 million years ago, the strait closed for the last time. Within a thousand years, the Mediterranean almost completely dried up, leaving behind a deep dry basin filled with a few hypersaline lakes similar to the modern-day Dead Sea. This situation persisted for about 270,000 years, until the Strait of Gibraltar finally reopened and the Atlantic refilled the Mediterranean basin during a legendary event called the Zanclean Flood. This fascinating period of geological history, referred to as the Messinian Salinity Crisis, inspired the mind of visionary German architect Hermann Sorgel. In 1928, he introduced a proposal. By building a massive dam across the Strait of Gibraltar, we could reenact the Messinian Salinity Crisis, but on a lower scale, opening up new lands for settlement, allowing for massive hydropower generation, and uniting all of Europe and Africa into a new supercontinent called Atlantropa. The main component of Sorgol's proposal was a massive 35-kilometer-long dam arching across the Strait of Gibraltar. It would stand over 300 meters tall, would use 10 billion cubic meters of concrete, and would be equipped with a 50-gigawatt hydroelectric power plant. Over double the capacity of the world's current largest hydroelectric power plant, the Three Gorges Dam in China. In addition to this main dam, there would also be a 4-kilometer-long dam and hydroelectric power plant across the Dardanelles Strait to hold back the Black Sea, along with numerous other hydroelectric power plants. Once these dams were finished, the Mediterranean Sea would begin drying up, at a rate of about 1.4 meters a year. After about 70 years, the sea level would have dropped 100 meters. At this time, a third dam would then be constructed between Sicily and Tunisia, splitting the Mediterranean into eastern and western sections. After this dam was finished, the Strait of Gibraltar hydroelectric power plant would open for operation, pouring water back into the western Mediterranean to maintain the new sea level. However, in the eastern Mediterranean, the drying would continue for several decades longer to lower the sea level to negative 200 meters. Finally, after this period, the Sicily-Tunisia dam would allow water in, maintaining the sea level. Once complete, the Atlantropa scheme would expose 576,000 square kilometers of new land, an area roughly the size of the Iberian Peninsula. The Adriatic Sea would be almost completely drained, vast new lands would be opened up along Tunisia and along the entire Mediterranean coast, between 20 and 100 kilometers of new land would be exposed. Along this new coast, Sorgel imagined glimmering metropolises such as New Genoa. To ensure Venice's access to the Mediterranean, a new canal would be excavated, and to maintain a connection to the Red Sea, the Suez Canal would be extended. Further out, the project would unite Europe and Africa into a new supercontinent called Atlantropa. New rail links would be built between Berlin and Cape Town across the Sicily-Tunisia Dam, and between Paris and Dakar underneath the Gibraltar Dam. Lastly, in Africa, Sorgel proposed massive projects to redirect water away from the Congo River, creating huge inland lakes in the Congo and Chad, which would be used to irrigate the Sahara and make the climate more hospitable for European settlers. He also proposed a new shipping lane connecting the Mediterranean to Lake Victoria and further onwards to the Indian Ocean. Together, all these projects would take about 150 years to complete. Sorgel claimed they would provide some major benefits for Europe. First of all, as he advertised, the vast new lands along the Mediterranean could be used for settlement and food production, providing a peaceful alternative to the Lebensraum concept of expansionism that was gaining popularity in Germany 
at the time. In addition, all of the project's hydroelectric power plants would provide 110 gigawatts of green renewable energy, enough to power all of Europe and Africa in the 1920s. Moreover, the enormous scale of the project would unite the then war-torn Europe together, creating an interdependence that would rule out any future armed conflict. The construction would also provide hundreds of thousands of jobs, invigorating the European economy. Maybe most importantly though, Sorgel saw the project as a way for Europe to maintain its competitive edge against Asia and the Americas. By integrating itself with the African continent, it could exploit the continent's natural resources to fuel its economy and maintain its status as the dominant global power. While European sentiments have improved over the last century, international competition is still alive. For example, the German government just recently presented a strategy on its approach to dealing with China. It's interesting to see how the media frame this story. Some sources describe China as assertive, while others claim it points to systematic rivalry. This is why I've been using Ground News, and I'm excited to have them as today's sponsor. The app and website are an essential resource for staying fully informed and avoiding the echo chambers created by manipulative algorithms. I was able to get a quick overview of all the articles published on this story. There's more than 30 sources covering this, and we could compare each headline and see things like the political bias and ownership of each outlet and how factual the reporting practices are. I especially like that it shows where in the world coverage is or isn't coming from. I've been following topics like China and Germany to get breaking news from thousands of local and international sources that I otherwise would have missed. All this gives a more well-rounded view on current events as they combine thousands of local and international sources in one place. Check out my link for 30% off unlimited access at ground.news slash futurology. The link is in the description. While Sorgel promised a list of benefits for Atlantropa, the reality would be much, much different. First of all, building the Strait of Gibraltar Dam would be incredibly challenging. It would cost trillions of dollars and would require all 2023 global concrete production for six years. This effort would be nowhere near worth the 50 gigawatts of hydro capacity it would install. Not to mention this hydro capacity would not even be available for 100 years while the sea level was dropping. Moreover, the dam would be a single point of failure. If a war ever erupted, it could be destroyed with a single nuclear bomb, rendering the entire project useless. Even if the dam was built, the problems would only worsen. By receding the sea level, all of the Mediterranean's historic coastal communities, including Barcelona, Valencia, Marseille, Naples, Venice, Athens, Antalya, Alexandria, Tripoli, Tunis, Algiers, and countless others, would all be stranded inland. Their ports would be useless, economies would be damaged, and people would be unhappy. In addition, all of the current coastal marine habitats would be destroyed, decimating fish populations and marine life across the Mediterranean. But in return, we would get vast new lands for agriculture and settlement, right? Unfortunately, no. All of the new exposed land would be salt flats, unusable for agriculture or nearly anything useful. Disregarding all of this, draining the Mediterranean would create a major headache for global trade. Thousands of kilometers of canals and locks would have to be built. For a ship traveling between Shanghai and Venice, for example, rather than traveling at the same uninterrupted sea level as it would now, it would first have to go down several locks at the new Suez Canal, travel a couple thousand kilometers, and then go back up several more locks to reach Venice. Really inconvenient. On top of all this, by changing the Mediterranean's geography, researchers suspect that Atlantropo would divert the Gulf Stream, plunging temperatures across northern Europe. Maybe most importantly though, Sorgel's foremost reason to build the project was to allow European powers to exploit Africa's natural resources and use it for colonization. The project was proposed during a period when practically all of Africa was European colonies. At this time, many Europeans believed that only they could bring peace and prosperity to Africa, and that as a result, the best solution was to create a land bridge between the two continents. But taking a look back at history, this new supercontinent would probably not be one of equality and cooperation, but rather of colonialism, exploitation, and inequality. Not to mention, flooding the Congo and Chad lakes would displace millions of people. 
clearly, Atlantropo was not a good idea. Despite this, the idea gained popularity in 1920s and 30s Germany, and as a result, Sorgel gained quite a few followers. He even formed an organization called the Atlantropa Institute, through which he tirelessly promoted the idea until his death in 1952. However, after this, without Sorgel promoting it, the decolonization of Africa and the rise of nuclear power as a new symbol of energy and progress the proposal faded from the public view. In 1960, the Atlantropa Institute disbanded. While Atlantropa was not a great idea, it only involved lowering the Mediterranean Sea by a couple hundred meters. It makes you wonder what would happen if we went all the way and completely drained the Mediterranean. To completely drain the Mediterranean, we would construct the same setup as in the Atlantropa proposal. However, instead of allowing water in eventually, we would never let it in. Over about a thousand years, the Mediterranean Sea would completely evaporate. The basin would become a massive salt flat desert, even more hostile than the Sahara. Enormous canyons would plunge as deep as five kilometers below sea level. Here, temperatures would reach an intolerable 80 degrees Celsius or 176 degrees Fahrenheit, compared to the current world record in Kuwait at 54 degrees. This vast new desert would kick up salt and sandstorms, destroying arable land across the continent and turning much of southern Europe into desert. People would tell stories of the olden days when the Mediterranean was blue and Europe was green. Lastly, the 3.75 million cubic kilometers of water drained from the Mediterranean would be redistributed back into the world's oceans, raising global sea levels by about 10 meters. New York City, Miami, Shanghai, and Mumbai would all be underwater. Fortunately, none of this will happen, at least not in the near future. Within the next few million years, though, it is predicted that the northeast movement of the African tectonic plate will close the Strait of Gibraltar. The Mediterranean Sea will dry up, biodiversity will be lost, and Europe will become a desert. Actually, maybe not. If human civilization is still around, we could simply excavate an artificial canal to the Atlantic, saving the Mediterranean. In summary, us humans are filled with ideas, some that we may think are good, but in reality are not. One thing we can feel certain about, though, is that the Mediterranean Sea is better off filled with water, and that we should cherish this lovely period of geological history that we live in, along with the beautiful sea, coastlines, and climate it has given us. If you enjoyed this video, it would be amazing if you like and subscribe to Futurology for more videos very similar to this one. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.